Good morning, family. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Sell our radio network. All things Soul Winners right there on the Lehigh Valley's number one urban gospel music station. Been online since 2008, and we're still here. All glory to God. Also streaming on the DJ Sam Rock page on the YouTube, amen, and on social media networks that allow the stream to go through. And thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting me, both through prayer first. Please pray for this ministry. Pray for my family, and I'll continue to pray for you and your family, and continue to supporting us financially, and we could do this thing together. We are so much better. We could reach more people together than I can um, just with the people that we have here on the network amen so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart amen and i've prayed to the one who's on top for your life amen that you will receive a hundredfold return blessing for any type of support that you have given us amen i pray that and i believe that prayer um, to come to pass in your life amen as well so let's go for it today on the morning devo you know we're going to talk about security Amen. Security. I know for sure I've been married 25 years and I know one of the most important things in my wife and her mindset is she wants to feel secure. She wants to know that she's secure with her husband, with me. Amen. Um, To support her uh, physically, emotionally and financially. Amen. Uh, Security is found um, that way in a lot of women's hearts. Amen. They want to know that they're secure and they can trust and they can believe. But how many people know? How many people know that there's no security in our possessions? There's no security in man, like uninspired men. Like if I was an uninspired man, meaning that if I don't have Holy Spirit God living inside of me, why would my wife trust me? Why would anyone trust me? Amen. Because I will be unreliable, right? I won't be truthful. I won't be um, righteous. Amen. And I won't be guided by the God of heaven and earth. I'll be guided by my own heart and before Christ entered into my life this heart it was full of deceit wickedness anger sin lies it was full of all kind of worldly things but when you get saved when I got saved God changed my heart amen it's like he took out the old heart and replaced it with his heart a new heart amen and now I could really follow my heart now as a born again believer amen if you're not born again, my, my, my suggestion is don't follow, stop following your heart. Don't follow it no more. Amen. Follow the Lord Jesus who could change your heart and make it a heart filled with his desires for your life and for my life. Amen. And that'll be a great, great way of living for the rest of your life until Jesus comes back for us. Amen. So listen, this, this is what I put. Security is not found in possessions. Very simple, straight to the point. Amen. Today on the Morning Devo, we're going to be in Luke chapter 12, verse number 15, Luke 12 and 15 on the Morning Devo today. So let's go for it, man. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests anytime during this live stream, and even if I'm not live by the time you listen or watch, make sure you just put your two cents in there. You know what I mean? Just um, text Message me, inbox me, email me, con- contact me from the web po- from the website about a message that you heard from me or somebody else or whatever. You have a question, a concern, and a prayer requests. I take those very important. Like I mean, I put importance to your prayer requests because I know how it is when you need prayer, Amen. And you're trying to get people to rally uh, behind you and pray. I believe there's power in prayer, especially when the righteous pray. When the righteous pray. The Bible says, our prayer availeth much. And whatever that much is at the time of the prayer, amen, God shows up in those prayers. It's an amazing thing. So, Father, I thank you so much that we have the privilege to pray to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I give you glory for that. I give you honor, praise, worship, adoration. Everything, Lord God, that you have done deserves honor, glory, worship, and praise. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to protect me, guide me, guard me, me, myself, my family, my whole entire bloodline, from the very youngest family member to the very oldest, everyone in between, my mom, that you will bless her life, that you continue to heal her body physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and guide her through, Lord God, any situation that she might be facing right now when it's dealing with decision-making 
or anything that has to do with home living, household health, so bones, strength to a body. In Jesus' name, I also pray that for every single mom and every single parent over every single individual that's on the other side of the screen or the other side of this mic, that you will bless them, that you will encourage them, strengthen them, and give them um, the will and understanding and the wisdom to know what to do and how to navigate life in any part of their life. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And find that, finally, Lord God, security, that we can find a security not in our possessions, but find security in you through your word. In Jesus' name. And all those who agree, we say amen and amen. So let's go for it. Help me share this out for a minute. When we come back, we'll get right into Luke chapter number 12, verse number 15. I'll be right back. Let's go for it. Let's see what the Word of God has for us today. An amazing time. It's an amazing time to be here on earth, man. So much going on. So much turmoil, right? So much political things going on. So much um, crime and all that stuff. You might be saying, I say I'm celebrating that. No, I'm not celebrating. I'm just saying this is the time where God shows up in your life and in my life through these times so we could see his power, his grace, his mercy, amen, his love. Right? His everlasting love. His love endures forever, the scripture says. And we're secure in that. I'm secure in that. Knowing that whatever happens, God, if God allows something crazy to happen in my life, right? Tragic. I might be like, this guy is off his rocker. No, I'm not. I'm just, this is the way I think. It's, if God allows it, that means someone's going to get blessed. Right? In a great way. Because God don't allow things to happen just because he said, you know what, I'm going to take a day off and I'm going to let the whole universe suffer. No, he's never taken a day off. He's always been here, always has been and always will be. So if he allows something, that means that there's a greater plan. We might not understand it. So security, a lot of people find their security in their possessions. They hide in their possessions. Um, They worship their possessions um, because they think that that's going to keep them safe. From all that's happening in the world. They think influence, money, riches, fame, fortune is going to keep them secure. They think um, taking this pill and that pill and, and getting this type of surgery and that plastic surgery is going to keep them secure. Or in this makeup, right? It's going to keep them secure. Nah, it's not that. That's not it at all. Think about it real clear. Security is only found in the one who keeps things secure. But that's the Lord himself. Security is not found in the things that are created. Security is found in the creator of all things. How about that? So let's go for it. I don't know why I'm preaching today. What's going on again? Woke up a preacher? Amen. So I'm going to the radio, sell out radio network, soulwinnerswithaz.org. No worries. If this is your first time listening, you might be saying, why is he talking about what's going on on the screen if I'm just listening? It's because we're doing a live stream at the same time. Amen. A visual one. And of course, an audio one that you're listening to. So hold tight. Don't leave. Amen. Keep listening because I'm going to read it word for word what we're seeing on the screen. Amen. So let's go for it. Amen. Security is great when it works. That's all I got to say. Security is great when it works. Did I say security is great when it works? No. Technology is great when it works. Amen. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. The Lord says, then he said to them, this is the Lord speaking, watch out. 
and guard yourselves against every form of greed. For not even when one has an overflowing abundance does his life consist or no, of nor is it derived from his possessions. Jesus is keeping this so straight. You can't miss this. Jesus is saying, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. You get that? So stop envying if you're envying other people's possessions. Stop envying that. If you're kind of like hating on somebody's fortune, stop hating on that. Listen, it's clear the world has already proven to us that they put more emphasis, they put more value on athletes more than doctors, police officers, firefighters, nurses, the people who are keeping us healthy and safe get paid less than people who are entertaining us. World system. Have you ever thought of that? The world system puts more value on things that entertain us over the things or the people that keep us safe and secure on this earth. Make that make sense. It doesn't. Jesus knew it. Knew, knew it. He knows it. He's telling us to watch out. Guard ourselves against every form of greed because that's a form of greed. How an athlete, shout out to all the athletes out there. I know you worked hard to get to professional level. Boxing, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, hockey, you know, whatever, tennis. I know you work, you all were all worked hard. I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't get any kind of compensation for it. Some of you guys are over the top with your compensation. Unless you're giving back to the community that you came from, or you're giving back to a good cause or whatever, or you want to give to the ministry here at someone is with a Z.org forward slash donate. If you're an athlete and you believe in the Lord and you have abundance, amen, and you want to support like somebody randomly, amen, I need your support. And I'll take your support and I'll invest your support in other lives and other families. And if you want, I'll definitely shout you out for it, amen, and pray for you and continue to pray for you. But I mean, what I'm saying is, think about it. My, my son is a firefighter. He gets paid pretty good. But compared to what an athlete in New York gets paid on the you know, the New York Knicks, Nets, or you know, whatever team locally, it doesn't compare. So you have someone who's making X amount and then you have someone who's making ten times that amount for bouncing a ball. Amen. And shooting it into a hoop. Because basically, that's at its basic form, that's what it is. And I'm, like I said, I'm not knocking the athletes. And I'm saying that it didn't take you, you know, a lot of effort and practice and time. And you're still training as your career is going. Amen. Praise God for that. I pray a supernatural increase in your strength and endurance for every single athlete out there that's striving to be in professional sports, Olympics, or anything that you want to do, I pray God will give you favor and strength and help to get it done. And I'm not saying that you don't deserve any kind of repayment or payment or endorsements for it. What I am saying is that we don't find a security in those type of possessions. Because if you're an athlete, you know that it takes one bad game, one bad fall, one injury can end it all. Amen? That's why I love it when true Christians, true believers that are athletes, they look up in the sky and give glory to the Lord Jesus for the game, that they didn't get hurt, but they um, did well, that they were healthy enough to play, that everything pretty much in their life was stable so that way they could concentrate on the game itself other than other things that might be going on in their lives. Very important, man. Acknowledge those things. God sees your heart. God sees what you do in public. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? God sees what we do in secret. Amen? So either way, we could bring him honor and glory. Even when people don't see our successes and other things because it's behind the scene. Ministries like this have a lot of behind the scenes. Nobody knows. Nobody sees. Amen? And sometimes I, I like... I say, can I, can I, Lord, can I just tell people what I just did or what this ministry was able to do for this family, for that ministry? 
And God continues to say, you don't have to tell nobody. He knows. It's like the audience of one. Amen. And to me, that's a blessing. As long as the Lord acknowledges what's going on <coughs> through his ministry that he allowed me to shepherd or he allowed me to be responsible for, right? I'm good with that. Amen. Yeah, I, I would like to go on social media with a lot of pictures, a lot of video footage of this, time and the third. Yeah, I would like to do that. Amen. But God says no. As long as he says no, I'm going to say no. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing to be obedient to what God says more than to what your flesh is saying. How many people can say amen? So, secure, so security, what do you find security in? To be honest, in this world, do you find security in the things that you have or the people that you love? Or maybe I'm starting to notice a trend of young young girls, young women, young adults. Um, they might be like five feet tall. And I'm finding a trend that their boyfriends are like six, seven, seven foot tall. Like they're huge, they're tall. And I know... I know, they might deny it, but I know they find security in that. A protector they find in a big, you know, big, healthy guy, amen, walking alongside of them or with them. They find security in that. But ladies, let me just tell you again, you can't rely on that type of security unless you have a man of God that that's, that's big like that. If he's not a man of God, um... Yeah, you might be fooling yourself. So be careful in how you find security, what you find security in, and who you find security in. If it's outside of God's will or God's word for your life, amen, you might be running in a dangerous circle. You might be wasting some time, amen. God doesn't waste our time. We waste our own time sometimes by our own decisions that we make. So what do you find security in, amen? Is it in yourself? Is it in riches, fame, fortune, possessions? Think about it clearly. I mean, you don't have to answer it here. You could answer that between you and the Lord. You take a self-evaluation and be honest because God knows your heart anyway. So be honest with God. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. I think we hit some of this um, the other day of the scripture. Command those who are rich in this present world, command them not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain how many people can say amen the wealth is so uncertain in 2020 when covid hit i was i was pretty well off amen for whatever reason god used that year to the covid the shutdown he used that year <clears throat> to allow me to create the studio that i'm in it was thousands of dollars amen and he allowed me to pay it in cash can't make this up. It's all glory to God. The world shut down and God supplied for this ministry, for this minister. Amen. For my family. He provided in an amazing way. Everything. That's why I'm, I'm grateful for everything God does in my life. Amen. Because I know it was only him that allowed me to get what I have. And I treasure what I have. Not over how I treasure him. But I know it was because it was because of him that gave me a breakthrough that I could get things that allowed me to do what I do. Not for me only, but for other ministries and other families as well. Amen? During the shutdown and COVID. So, which is uncertain. Riches are uncertain. But to put their hope in God. I always tell people to do that. Amen? I believe it. I do it every day. Put my hope and trust in the Lord every single day. Amen? I suggest you do the same thing. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I see you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Put your hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Whoa. Did God say we could enjoy life? Or do we have to be like just frigid and square? You can't go to movies. You can't go listen to music. You can't dance. Listen, I'm a DJ and I crave Christian dancing. Amen. I want to see Christians dance. Amen. Why we don't dance no more? In my territory, in my, in my community, there's a, a, not a lot of dancing going on. But I have a pastor, uh, my pastor's wife. Amen. She could dance. And she loves to dance. And the people around her that support her, the woman of God, they dance also. I love it. Let's dance. Let's celebrate life. Amen. We should be the most 
celebratory people on the whole entire planet. We should be full of joy. We should be enjoying life because we have the God who created us with this joy in our hearts. Joy, 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 right? Down in my heart. We have it. So we should be dancing, man, having a, a good time. I know. But other sects, S-E-C-T-S, sects of Christianity says, no, we're not. You shouldn't be dancing. You know, that's ungodly. You know, <laughs> So let's, come on, man. Let's lighten up. Let's be joyful. Let's be secure in Jesus Christ. Let's be secure in him. Let's not worry about the rules and regulations that we're kind of like putting on top of ourselves. We're, we're, we're dead to the law. The law is still here, absolutely. But we're dead to it. So, you know, take that for what it is. I'm talking about the law of Moses, not the law of the land. Amen. We're not dead to the law of the land. We follow the laws of the land. And we follow the law of the Lord Jesus, amen, in the New Covenant Church. And the law of Moses still stands. But when we got born again, we're dead to that law. Take it for what it is. Look it up in the scriptures. It's there. Book of Hebrews. But, man, let's go for it. Enjoy life. Be secure, not in your possessions, not what you have. Because that will stress you out. Imagine your security is only found in your possessions. And then when those possessions get stolen or if those possessions break, or, you know, if you have a nice car, you're like, wow, I'm going to cherish this car. You're taking care of it. You did everything you've done. I'm speaking from experience. You do everything for that car, man, maintenance, everything, and it still breaks down on you. Amen? Because you found some kind of security in that. Be careful with that. That's not true security. True security security is the one who gives you security, the one who keeps you safe, the one who gives you patience, love, long-suffering, endurance. Amen? He gives you joy, man, and he's love. That's God himself. Good morning, Sister Joyce. I see you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you, my sister and my friend. So Isaiah, how about this one? Isaiah 58, verse number 11. The Lord will guide you always. How, how, how long will the Lord guide us? Always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame like in times of hard hardship he will strengthen us time that it seems like you're like the, the milk and honey is not flowing no more time that it feels like it's like a drought the Lord will strengthen your frame you will be like a well watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail that's security. We could be secure in that, knowing that God is there. He's with you. He's in you. He's working through you. You can't get any closer to God. I know a lot of people like said, we got to get closer to the Lord. Listen, God lives inside of us. I don't know how closer he could be. Amen. I just don't know how closer God could be when he lives inside of every single believer in Christ. We have communion with Jesus himself. Can't get any closer than that. Alone time with God. What does that mean? Amen. You want alone time with God? We're having a long time right now. Individually, we are being spoken to by Holy Spirit God. We're devoting our first part of the day to Holy Spirit God through His Word. Amen. And through fellowship. We are in communion. We are so in touch with the Lord. We are clean and we are safe and we are secure and we are close. Amen. Don't think that you have to do something outside of what we're doing right now, getting into the Word, fellowship, praying. We, we're doing it all right here on our Morning Devo. We prayed first. We introduced each other. We're fellowshipping through the Word. Amen? Now we're being strengthened and empowered and guided by Holy Spirit God. We got it. We got it. Continue to do what you're doing right now. Amen? You can do this all day. If you have a job, you could do some mental, mental prayers. You don't always have to speak it out of your mouth. If you want to, you can, right? But you don't always have to. God knows us. He knows us intimately. He wants a relationship with his children. And we are his children. And by the way, a lot of people say, oh, we're all God's children. And they're not part of the kingdom of God. They're saying a saying, right? Uh, it makes sense, but it's not true. Because the Bible says, only the Lord Jesus Christ gives us the right to be called what? Children of God. It's an exclusive 
privilege, amen, to be a part of God's family through what the Lord Jesus did. So going back to Luke chapter 12, when Jesus says, then he said to them, watch out. I'm telling you, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. When you have a lot of things, sometimes the way people get a lot of things is because they take a lot of things from other people's opportunities to get what they have. So in corporate America, you see that all the time. They're climbing up the ladder of success. And anybody in their way, they're going to step over or step on. That's the way corporate America is. That shouldn't be in the church. Should not be in the church, any church. When I'm saying the church, I mean the congregation. The leadership of the congregation. Because we are the church, the body of Christ. Amen. And shouldn't be, corporate America should not be responsible for our increase in any which way. Amen. The Lord will provide the increase. If we're secure in him, amen, we have security in his word, his power, his love, his grace, and his mercy. Amen. His promises. What about his promises? Don't forget about God's promise over your life and over my life. And there could be multiple promises. Wait on them. Trust God. If you heard him promise you something, those promises will 100% come to pass. I know it. I've experienced it. I know people who have experienced it. I know testimonies from people all around um, the country all around the world could testify of this being true. And that excites us. And we have security in God. We have security in his promises. We have security in his word, not in our possessions. A lot of times possessions will cause us to be greedy. We will want more of those possessions, want more of this, more of that, more cars, more houses, more fame, more fortune. Amen. And God saying, no, that's not true security. Watch out, Jesus says. Don't be greedy. He says, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. That's the message today. Luke chapter number 12. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. And I hope you have a great day. I'm out of time, but thank you so much for hanging out with me on these morning devos. It's a pleasure, honor. I'm humbled by it, and I'm blessed by it. I hope you're blessed as well. God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.